Good morning. Grace, mercy, and peace be unto you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you for joining us this morning and creating a sacred space there in your home. It is our hope that something will be said or done to charge you, challenge you, and to encourage you in faith and in your walk with the Lord. The next few minutes will be a time of worship, word, and witness. And if you wish to be a blessing to this ministry, these are the ways in which you can give. Through our website, through text giving, through quick pay and Zelle, and good old fashioned United States mail. Thank you, and let's go to church. Grace, mercy, and peace be unto you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Grace, mercy, and peace be unto you from God our Father and our Lord Jesus Christ. Blessed are you, holy and living one. You come to your people and set them free. As we continue our Advent pilgrimage, let us in prayer and praise, thanksgiving and song, give voice to the hope set forth in the scriptures that Christ's reign of love and light will indeed come among us. Let us offer ourselves anew as witnesses to the advent of Christ's glory, seeking to bring Christ's light and love to those who sit in darkness. Come, O long expected Jesus, come. the season of Advent, the third Sunday of Advent. Even with the law to guide them, the Israelites failed to maintain a righteous lifestyle. God raised up judges to lead the people, but one phrase appears over and over in the book of Judges. Once again, the Israelites did evil in the eyes of the Lord. The same was true during the era of the kings. Some of the good kings restored righteousness for a time. Then the people returned to their wicked ways and became more corrupt than ever. God was growing weary of dealing with the Israelites. He sent the prophets to speak for him and warn the people of disaster to come if they continued in sin. Still, they paid no attention. At last, God planned a better way. No longer would he try to control people on the outside. He would change them on the inside. Through the prophet Ezekiel, God outlined what he would do. And I will give them one heart, a new heart, and I will put a new spirit within them. And I will take the stony, unnaturally hardened heart out of their flesh and will give them a heart of flesh sensitive and responsive to the touch of their God. God was speaking of the dispensation to come, when the Messiah would take upon himself the sins of the world. Several of the prophets foretold the birth of the Savior, one that we often refer to is Isaiah. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. The first candle reminds us of God's gift of life. The second candle represents the law, the first step toward reconciliation between God and mankind. Today, we celebrate the rich heritage we have received because of the words spoken by the prophets.
Grace and peace and good morning. Good morning to you and your homes. Welcome to the service and welcome to this worship experience. This song says, how great is our God. Sing with me, how great is our God. All will see how great, how great is our God. You're the name above all names. You are worthy of all praise and our hearts will sing how great is our God. If you believe that, just begin to worship in your homes and listen to this. How great is our God. Sing with me how great is our God. Oh, we'll see how great, how great is our God. Oh, how great is our God. Come on and sing with me, how great, how great is our God. Sing with me, how great is our God. Oh, we we'll see how great is our God. Hallelujah. Come on and sing with me, how great, how great is our God. Sing with me, how great is our God. Come on and sing with me, you're the name, you're the name.
Father, we bless you. We worship you because you're the great God. We worship you. We honor you because you're a great God. From the rising of the sun to the going down of the same, your name is to be praised. God, your name is a strong tower. The righteous run into it and they are saved. Father, we bless you. We thank you for another day. We thank you for another opportunity. We thank you for another chance to get it right. God, we bless you because it was you that watched over us as we slumbered and slept last night in the very image of death. God, you touched us with your finger of love and you bid us to get up, oh God. It was not our alarm clocks, oh God. So we don't have spiritual amnesia this morning. We want to say thank you. We want to say thank you because if it had not been for you who was on our side, the enemy would have consumed us. God, we say thank you. Thank you for this second Sunday of December. Thank you, dear God, for this season of Advent. God, we wait in great anticipation for your second coming. God, you're coming back to get your church. You're coming back for us, oh God. Father, I pray that you would have your way in this service today, God. In the mighty name of Jesus, God, all those that shall sing, all those that shall minister, thank you for a fresh touch. Thank you for anointing them, oh God. In the name of Jesus, God, we thank you, oh God, for your manservant. Send your word through our bishop chambers this morning. Speak to our hearts, God. Speak to our hearts, God. Send a rhema, God, a special word. Tell it to our situations, oh God. In the mighty name of Jesus, God, we want to thank you and bless you. Because when it's all said and done, we have the collective testimony that it was good for us to have logged on. It was good for us to have signed in. It was good for us to have gathered our families together to worship this morning for the great things that you have done. These things we ask, we believe it in Jesus' name. Thank God, amen and amen. A reading from the prophet Isaiah, chapter 61, verses one to four, eight through 11. Here begins the reading of God's word. The spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord has anointed me. He has sent me to bring good news to the oppressed, to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and release to the prisoners, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor and the day of vengeance of our God to comfort all who mourn, to provide for those who mourn in Zion, to give them our garland instead of ashes, the oil of gladness instead of mourning, the mantle of praise instead of a faint spirit. They will be called oaks of righteousness, the planting of the Lord to display his glory. They shall build up the ancient ruins. They shall raise up the former devastations they shall repair the ruined cities, the devastations of many generations. For I, the Lord, love justice. I hate robbery and wrongdoing. I will faithfully give them their recompense, and I will make an everlasting covenant with them. Their descendants shall be known among the nations and their offspring among the peoples. All who see them shall acknowledge that they are people whom the Lord has blessed. I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My whole being shall exalt in my God, for he has clothed me with the garments of salvation. He has covered me with the robe of righteousness as a bridegroom decks himself with a garland and as a bride adorns herself with her jewels. For as the earth brings forth its shoots, and as a garden causes what is sown in it to spring up, so the Lord God will cause righteousness and praise to spring up before all the nations. The word of the Lord. A reading from the gospel of our Lord according to Luke chapter 1. My soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God, my Savior, 
for he has looked with favor on the lowliness of his servant. Surely, from now on, all generations will call me blessed. For the mighty one has done great things for me, and holy is his name. His mercy is for those who fear him from generation to generation. He has shown strength with his arm. He has scattered the proud in the thoughts of their hearts. He has brought down the powerful from their thrones and lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty. He has helped his servant Israel in remembrance of his mercy, according to the promise he made to our ancestors, to Abraham and to his descendants forever. The Gospel of the Lord.
Mary, did you know that your baby boy would one day walk on water? Mary, did you know that your baby boy would save our sons and daughters? Did you know that your baby boy has come to make you new? This child that you've delivered will soon deliver you. Mary, did you know that your baby boy would give sight to a blind man? Did you know your baby boy would calm the storm with his head? Did you know? That your baby boy has walked where angels trod. And when you kiss your little baby, you've kissed the face of God. Mary, did you know? Oh. 
May the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Touch our ears that we might hear, our minds that we might understand, and our hearts that we may believe and receive the things that you shall say to us now. Charge us, challenge us, and encourage us that our exit will be better than our entrance. In Jesus' name, amen. Good morning and grace and peace to all of you here, there, and everywhere as we join together in heart, mind, and spirit with the voice and mind and heart and spirit towards the Lord, his loving kindness, his tender mercies, and his grace that he has extended to us. Well, we're getting closer to the end of the year, the second Sunday. We have two more, and shortly we will be crossing over into 2021. Whatever the year has been to you, when you get to the 31st, we can all still say God has been good. And so, and the lesson that was read to you today from the gospel is where I'd ask you to draw your attention to verse uh, number 35. And here begins the reading of God's word. Mary said to the angel, how will this happen? I have never had a man. And the angel said to her, the Holy Spirit will come on you. The power of the Most High will cover you. The holy child you give birth to will be called the Son of God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Imagine having planned your life, your entire life. Your dreams, aspirations, and goals are all before you. You're on a timeline. You have identified benchmarks. Your goals are realistic and measurable. You know where you're going. You have mapped your journey with minute detail. Everything is working according to plan, and then unexpectedly, suddenly, without warning, everything is changed. Your plans have been interrupted. Well, this is the story of Mary, a young woman waiting for the man of her dreams with whom she would live and share the remainder of her life. She's engaged, preparing to be married, and about to live the life that every Jewish girl of her time wanted and waited for. This angel shows up, frightens, with, frightens her with those life-changing words. Hail Mary, you are favored among women, and you will be the mother of God's son. She has plans, however, and God has a greater plan who he has preferred among many in your community and of your generation. Imagine God interrupting your life because he has favored you. I want to talk to you from the subject, Mary, did you know? C.S. Lewis writes, the great thing, if one can, is to stop regarding all of the unpleasant things as interruptions of one's own or real life. The truth is, of course, that what one calls the interruptions are precisely one's real life. The life God is sending one day by day. Interruptions. They are bricks in our neat and tidy constructed plans. As much as we view them as bricks in the continuity of our process, they are in fact the work of God. Now, I want to be the first to confess I don't like and I do not appreciate interruptions. Having lived this long, I have an appreciation and value for a plan knowing where I'm going, how I'm going to get there, and when I can expect to arrive. Spontaneity, which I had some appreciation for in my younger years, is not something I relish these days. A plan can almost always predict an expected outcome, whereas spontaneity cannot be predicted. When I'm, when I, while I'm confessing, I am aware 
If it were not for interruptions, the unexpected, spontaneity, the unpredictable, I would not be the person I am today. And perhaps you can share in this thought everything that has happened to us has indeed happened for us. When you say yes to the Lord, when you submit yourself to his service, his choosing of you, using you, and favoring you, your life will be filled with interruptions. Mary is planning to be married to a man who is described in Scripture as a kind, compassionate, thoughtful, praying, God-fearing man. What woman in her time would not want to be betrothed to such a man? As the story continues to unfold, we see how he has a heart bent toward doing what is right. You see, his life, like Mary's, has been interrupted. Their plans have changed. Has anyone ever said to you that they heard God speaking to them? They looked calm, cool, collected, and certain that it was God speaking to them? I've wondered about that because each time I read in Scripture, especially in the Gospels, when God sent an angel or he himself speaks to someone, they were afraid. Before the message could be delivered in a manner in which it could be heard and as well as understood, the fears had to be relieved, calmed, and dismissed. Fear not is often the command to stop fearing so you can hear and understand what's being said to you. I'm just wondering, why is it that all of the folk who hear God speaking aren't shaking, aren't rattling, aren't fearful? Here's what I mean. I haven't heard them say, I heard God speaking to me at first. I was uncomfortable. And then calm came over me. And I heard and understood what the Lord had to say to me. Let me go at this again. Because whenever God speaks to you, speaks into your life, it will be followed by an interruption. One more time. When God speaks to you or speaks into your life, it means your plans are about to be changed. The place and things in which you were so comfortable in and with are about to be interrupted, changed. Where you thought you were going, what you thought you were going to be, and where and when you plan to arrive at your expected destination in life have all been interrupted, changed. Why is it these days, I want to ask, when God speaks, no one is shaken, rattled, or life is interrupted, changed? Is it because, is it because it is the God of your own making and choosing who is saying exactly what you want to hear and is doing exactly what you expect? Is it your own voice which you convinced you that God thinks the way you do, moves the way that you do, and that he has the same outcome in mind, in mind as you do? When the God of heaven and earth speaks, things don't go according to your plan, but his. The prophet writes, Isaiah, for my thoughts are not your thoughts, and neither are your ways my ways, saith the Lord. When God speaks something in your life should be shaken. Your faith, your fears, your plans, and your outcomes. Mary has a life planned out, and an angel shows up, and everything she has planned is now interrupted, changed. Let's look at this. In the passage, there are two people approached by angels, Zacharias and Mary. Similarly, there are two contrasting responses. Zacharias received the announcement of Elizabeth being with child. He's afraid and doubts. Mary receives the announcement that she too is with a child, is afraid, but moves out in faith. In verse 34 of the text, her response is, How can these things be seeing? I know not a man. In verse 46, her great song of faith 
My soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit has rejoiced in God my Savior, for he has regarded the lowly state of his maidservant. For behold, henceforth all generations shall call me blessed. Let's walk through this. The angel calls her highly favored. We sing about the favor of God. We preach about it. We pray for it. Prophesy about favor over our lives. And when asking someone on a given day, how are you doing? They may respond to you, I'm blessed and I'm highly favored. Favor can be a wonderful thing. Getting what you did not earn nor deserve. But favor, my brothers and sisters, is neither fair nor is it free. Being preferred by God to someone else or in a matter that should have adverse effect on your life is indeed a blessing. But when God favors you, however, it may cost you your plans. What and who you love, your reputation, your relationships, and even your future. She is betrothed to one of the finest men of her time, but she is pregnant with God's baby. Can you imagine what this sounded like to those she had to tell? Joseph, her parents, and his parents, and at some point, the community. According to the customs of that time, she would be stoned to death for such a thing. Joseph has rights. He could put her away and forget about her forever and move on with his life. Favor has put him in a really difficult spot. God's favor is an interruption to their lives. However, the favor of God always has a good outcome. Mary engaged to Joseph, and Mary is pregnant with God's baby. And Joseph says, what? Mary puts this whole thing into God's perspective. Her response moves her from fear to faith with a yes, Lord, be it unto me according to your word. Secondly, God places himself in the body of a virgin girl. God chooses his own mother. He swims in amniotic fluid, has a heartbeat. He's forming ears, a nose, lips, fingers and toes. God becoming flesh, incarnate, dwelling among us. Within her was he who said, let there be, and it was. Mary, the chosen vessel to bear God's son, is wonder enough. And now she is a participant in the miracle of the incarnation at the level no other human being can comprehend. This favor of God would be first of many interruptions to come. She would experience many more bewildering moments when she and Joseph thought they had lost him in Jerusalem. They found him and his reply, I must be about my father's business. At a wedding in Cana of Galilee, Jesus, Jesus gently rebuffed her, woman, what have I to do with thee? Lord, have mercy. Couldn't have been my mama. And it couldn't have been me. Lord, have mercy. Her response to those standing around was, whatever he says to you, do it. When he rejected the off efforts of his mother and brothers trying to help him, he said to them, who is my mother and who is my brothers? Who are my brothers? These had to be disturbing moments, yet she followed him all the way. Yes, that's the challenge of being favored. You have to follow when you don't understand and when you can't see where you're going and when you can't predict the outcome. Yes, all the way to the cross, to the crucifixion of your dreams and the asp your aspirations, to your goals and your outcomes. Favor means you have to follow him all the way. All the way. All the way. Lastly, she joined the disciples in the upper room waiting as he commanded for the coming of the Holy Spirit. 
She is for us the model of responsive obedience. She lived out her own directives to the servants at Cana. This timeless advice even to us today. Whatever he says to you, do it. Yes, my brothers and sisters, we are at this place where Mary was. You have been favored to carry this Christ to the world. You are his hands, his feet, his eyes, his ears. You are his mouth, his voice to the world. He was born of a virgin, hung on a cross, was crucified, died, and on the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated on the right hand of the Father. He is coming again. Your life has been interrupted because of his favor. Will you follow him all the way? All the way. All the way. Hail Mary, full of grace. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Mary, did you know that your baby boy would one day walk on water? Mary, did you know that your baby boy would save our sons and our daughters? Did you know that your baby boy has come to make you new? This child you've delivered will soon deliver you. Mary, did you know that your baby boy will give sight to the blind man? Mary, did you know that your baby boy will calm the storm with his hand? Did you know that your baby boy has walked where angels trod? When you kissed this little boy baby, you kissed the face of God. The blind will see, the deaf will hear. The dead will live again. The lame will leap. The dumb will speak the praises of the Lamb. Mary, did you know that your baby is the Lord of all creation? Mary, did you know that your baby boy would one day rule the nations? Did you know that your baby boy is heaven's perfect Lamb? That sleeping child that you're holding is the great I am. Mary, did you know? I'm just too close. Can't turn around. His grace brought me this far. I can't turn around. I'm just too close. I can't turn around. His grace brought me this far. I can't turn around. My steps are on. The way has been made. He promised he would be with me. Sometimes discouraged. But he encourages me. I've got the victory. I've got the victory. I'm just too close. I can't turn around. His grace brought me this far. I can't turn around. I'm just too close. I can't turn around. His grace brought me this far. I can't turn around. My steps are on. The way has been made. He promised he would be with me. Sometimes discouraged, but he encourages me. I've got the victory. Woo! Hey, come on.
prayer time. Won't you gather those in your home that may have slipped away while the word was going on? We want to pray as a family. In this season of Christmas, in the season of Advent, a time of shopping and giving of gifts, we want to remember that Jesus gave the best gift that he had. And he gave it to you and he gave it to me. And we want to give him thanks and we want to give him praise for it this morning. Father, we thank you. We bless you. We thank you, dear God, for your loving kindness, for the multitude of your tender mercies. Father, we thank you because if it had not been for you on our side, the enemy would have consumed us. Father, we thank you for the doors that you've opened. We thank you for the doors that you even close, oh God. We thank you, dear God, for protecting us, oh God, from things that would have harmed us. We want to say thank you. Father, in this last month of the year, these last two weeks of 2020, we want to stop. We want to take a minute. We want to pause in this pandemic to remember all that you've done for us. We want to thank you, oh God, for blessing us and keeping us, oh God, the things that we experience, the good, the bad, the ugly. God, so many things have shifted and changed, but you, dear God, have remained the same. You're the same today, yesterday, and forevermore. God, you're ever faithful. For this, we want to say thank you. God, in this time of disruption, distress, in this time of disturbance, in this time of dismay, oh God, we cry out to you, oh God. We hold on to and we remind you of your word. Through the prophet Isaiah, you told us not to fear that you were with us. God, you told us not to be dismayed because you would strengthen us. God, you said you would help us. You said you would hold us with your right hand, oh God, your hand of power. Your word says that you have redeemed us. You have called us by our name, God. You know our name. We belong to you, oh God. God, if we go through the waters, you promised that it would not overwhelm us. God, if we went through the fire, God, you promised that it would not burn us. God, wherever we are, whatever we're going through, God, you promise to be there with us, oh God. And we want to say thank you. God, when we're at our lowest, when it feels like we're at our darkest, oh God, even when we can't feel you, oh God, we know that you're there, oh God. God, you're true to your word. You're not like man that you should lie, nor the son of man that you should repent. God, we thank you now, God, for your presence in every home that's worshiping with us today. God, move by your spirit. Let your healing virtue flow. God, heal bodies, heal minds, save souls today. God, we thank you for healing families. Thank you for healing relationships. Thank you for healing marriages, oh God. In the name of Jesus, God, the spirit of depression and anxiety, uncertainty. God, and when we're feeling what we're feeling, and we don't have a word for it, we don't know what we're feeling, oh God. God, we want to thank you, oh God, because your presence is there. God, I pray now in the name of Jesus that you would arrest every spirit of confusion and disorder. We bind it now in the name of the Lord Jesus. God, we thank you for your peace. God, we thank you for perfect peace. For you said that if we kept our minds stayed on you, that you would keep us in perfect peace. God, keep our minds. Touch our minds this morning, oh God. Touch our minds this morning, oh God. Help us to meditate on you, on your word. God, whatsoever things are good, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are of a good report, help us to think on those things this morning, oh God. 
in the name of Jesus. God, we thank you for the wonderful things that you've done for us. God, during the pandemic, it hasn't been all bad. God, you've done some great and mighty things for us. God, you've blessed us and we want to say thank you. God, we thank you for the development of an effective vaccine. God, we know that you, it's you, you're the greatest physician. You are the chief epidemiologist. You know every virus and every bacteria. God, you can send healing and heal whichever way you wish. Oh God, you chose to send a vaccine, oh God, and we're grateful for it. God, we thank you, oh God, for the creation of the vaccine, God. God, I pray in the name of Jesus that any form of interference, any political agenda, oh God, that you would stop it now, oh God, in the mighty name of Jesus. God, help those who should be vaccinated to get it. God, let it be effective. We decree and we declare now that there will be no side effects, no untoward effects as a result of this, vi of this vaccine. It will do, oh God, what you designed it to do, oh God. In the name of Jesus, God, we pray that it would be distributed equitably, oh God, in the name of Jesus, that no one would be, no group, no ethnic group would be favored over another, oh God, in the mighty name of Jesus. God, we thank you and we praise you, oh God. Father, we know that it's you that can continue to cover us and keep us and heal us, oh God, despite the rise in the numbers, oh God. God, despite the prediction, for February of 2021, the thousands and millions of people that they have already said will die. God, we decree this morning, we decree this morning that it shall not come nigh us. We shall not be in that number. We speak life, we speak life, we speak life. We shall live to declare the word of the Lord. Father, thank you for your blood that covers us. God, continue to keep us, oh God. Your presence is now in every home. Thank you for moving in every room, oh God. In the mighty name of Jesus, God, we thank you for your keeping power and your saving grace. We thank you for what you're going to do. And we thank you, oh God, because on the other side of this pandemic, we're all gonna have a wonderful testimony that it was you, it was you that brought us, it was you that kept us. God, these things we ask, we proclaim them in the name of Jesus and we seal it with a praise. We seal it with a thank you. We seal it with a hallelujah. We seal it with a glory. We seal it with a praise. We seal it with a hallelujah. We seal it with a thank you. We open our mouths and we thank you. We open our mouths and we thank you. We clap our hands and we say thank you. Wherever we are, in the name of Jesus, we bless you and we honor you in Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Bless your name, Jesus. Bless your name, Jesus. Bless your name, Jesus. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Glory, glory. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you for tuning in today. And I hope the way we feel the Holy Ghost here, you feel him there. Because indeed, he's a prayer answering God. Uh, to the members of our church, we thank you again and as always for your liberalities, your generosities, and your sacrifices and your support of the City of Hope Creator St. Mary Church. And I'd ask that you give attention to all those uh, uh, information that is there in the left-hand side of your screen as the ways and means in which you can give if you're visiting with us here today, I do ask that you support your pastor and the church to which you belong. And then after you have done that and you are able, we certainly would appreciate, and if you are so inclined, any gifts and offerings that you feel led of the Lord to sow into the City of Hope Greater St. Mary Church. And my prayer and belief for you is that God is going to bless you exceedingly, abundantly, above and beyond. Get ready for your overflow. Join with us over the next two weeks as we make our way to Christmas and then to the end of the year, celebrating our Lord and Savior that even the worst of times, he's still a good God. And now may the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God, the communion and fellowship of the Holy Spirit 
rest, rule, and abide with you all henceforth now and forever. Amen. Go in peace to love each other and to serve the Lord. Order my steps in your word. Oh!